What I'm saying is the bike was the place that I went that all that disappeared. All the noise stopped and I could just, like, I just got lost in it. And I'm glad I kept going because in that next year, like, being able to dive into riding that way, like, really helped me. I never wanted to stop. I can see why my family might have wanted to. There's two things that pop up on my Instagram feed all the time. And one of them <laughs> is the, the goon riding video from early on and the other one is the battle with Stu. I can honestly say that was one of the funnest races I ever raced. We battled hard. The, the second moto we battled, but the first moto, it was like... It was on. It was on. Like, I, I think someone that's probably done that really well is Justin Brayton, you know? He, Dude, he, uh, for sure. Yeah, he. I mean, he. I remember going to our local arena cross and watching JB when I was like, I must have been 12 or 13, and I, I'm like, who, you know, who is this guy? And then uh, I remember my first year racing professionally, and I'm like, that's, that's the same Justin Brayton that was at the Lazy E in Guthrie, Oklahoma, <laughs> like 10 years ago. Um, and just to see the way that he has progressed, like, you know, to, to see, I, I mean, at the last three years, I mean, man, he was riding awesome, like unbelievable. And to, to see his journey, like he, he was concerned about his craft and kind of making sure that he made the most of this opportunity. And yeah, I'm sure he, you know, he had his goals or whatever, but, um, I just think he did that really well and, and i think ken's probably done that pretty good this last year i was year. literally about to say i think that kenny showing up to high point because his son said he wanted to go to the races that's like a really beautiful example of that as well you know like kenny could have rocked up and got smoked by time master pool but <laughs> and like he and he would have been cool with it you know like yeah. he went there with like really pure intentions did his thing and got a great result as a, you know, as, as the outcome. Yeah. And, and what's cool, you know, having the experience of just getting to know Ken in the last few years and then staying in touch with him through this whole process. Um, you know, I was kind of talking with him as he was riding all those bikes and, and I, and I told him, I said, just ride all of them, you know, in, in yeah. production testing, we ride all of them and there, there's things I like about each bike, but one of them is going to fit you, you know? And when he rode that Suzuki, I remember talking to him and he's like, dude, I love the thing, you know, and yeah. it was like kind of surprising to me because it's got such a bad rap over the last few years. But it was cool because, you know, I, I really think, I, yeah, he got paid well to go there, but I really think that he made that decision purely based on what he wanted. And, you know, to see kind of this last year unfold for him is really cool because I, I, I definitely saw the difficulties that he had the last few years and, and it was becoming difficult for him to keep showing up and it was becoming, I think, no fun for him. Mm. And now to see where he is now and, it, and it's like, it's pure for him. It's pure for him to be at the races and pure for him to want to train. And um, it's really cool for me to see as his friend, you know, to, to yeah. see him where he's at now. Yeah. And, you know, like in, in years past, I mean, guys just wouldn't do this sort of stuff like it, it almost seems like there no one had really kind of created a mold where like you could go from hrc to a privateer suzuki team on a 2017 model bike with a kid you know what i mean like that's just not something that like people would do so it's whatever's changed or whatever's in ken it's really cool that it's like that's okay and people celebrated it and then he went out and achieved amazing results like i mean dude indy well, I th was it indy him and basha uh, one of yeah, the greatest yeah. one of the best main events i've ever seen you know like and two really really rad guys that i mean dude you could almost lump jb in that category uh, uh, yeah. basha as well in that category like there's just a dude that loves riding a bike and he's like figured out that there's shit he likes doing, which cycling, training, racing, having his wife and kid there, making his making his fun videos, and it's like you can kind of see that he's also another one of those guys. It's just like living the dream. Yeah, I, I love it, man. I, I think um, kind of my era of racing, it was there was kind of like this blueprint you needed to yep. follow, you, you know, and it was like 
when you watch the media and, and what was happening, it was like pit boards and bicycles and laps and, you know, the, the like dramatic, like sweat off the brow kind of yeah. shot. When I was a kid, dude, I, I grew up on terra firma, you know, it was like these dudes in the hills, like, you know, and funny skits and the, the videos. And it was fun, man. Like I just, I wanted to do what I was seeing on terra firma. And so I, you know, when I look back on kind of my era, it's like almost a little disappointing because you lose, especially for the next generation, when they when they watch that, they're like, they're, they're going to go repeat that, you know? Yeah. And so you lose a lot of the joy of just riding a bike, being in a fun community. And so to see like now with the vlogs, uh, you know, a lot of the social media and people having fun, like I think it's like nothing but good for the sport. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And so do you, do you, was your career like actually different to how you imagined it being as a kid? Like, so you grew up and all the training and all the riding that you were doing, you're like, one day I'm going to get a terra firma part. And instead you got like <laughs> muscle milk <laughs> on a cycle bike <laughs> grinding with pit boards. Uh, totally. I like em- envision myself at like Castillo Ranch to like face to face. I'm like on my little BMX bike going, nah, you know, you know, no, nah, watch you, watch, you know. Yeah, and yeah. here I am, like, you know, this like super serious documentary about coming back from a back injury, um, which, you know, hey, it was all great, but it was definitely different. And, and I think it was a little bit hurtful to our sport that era because it was so uh like the, it was like ter- the terminator you know it was like this very rigid kind of you got to fit this mold and be this guy and uh and now it's like i see i see more personality showing up and uh and i love that i think it's it's awesome and guys Sorry. are racing longer you know when yeah. i when i was racing it was like if you were if you made it to 30 like you were like whew. <laughs> remember being in the autograph lines with K-Dub at like 32 and people were like, what are you hey there old man. man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now like our champions are like 30, you know, it's, it's, it's cool. I think it's, it's creating longe- longevity for the riders too. We're excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang. 